In this series of tutorials, we're going to take a look at compositing in Photoshop. And when I say compositing, it's uh, basically just taking a, a number of images or graphics from separate places and then putting them all together into one image. Uh, and this is the image uh, that we're going to work on here. As you see here, it's a it's a gig poster, and it's uh, um, it started off as uh, just an idea. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, let me quickly just jump over to. Um, the finder here. We can take a look at uh, what I started with. Uh, here I created a, a folder and I, I I started off with the idea that I, I wanted to have something that had a, a post-apocalyptic feel but yet at the same time uh, happy and fun. Um, I liked the idea of conceptual contrast and uh, that was essentially the starting point and from there um, I went to um, uh, I think it was uh, stockexchange.com. I think I've given you a link um, in the past uh, and and, uh, but I could have gotten these images from anywhere. The, uh, most of these are um, uh, free, although they probably have some license um, uh, with them. But uh, um, just to sort of give you a sense of what I started with, um, I just downloaded these and put them all into a single folder. And I wasn't necessarily sure how I was going to composite them together. I just knew that uh, there were some images here that I thought I could use. Um, and as it turned out, I didn't use all of them. Um, but I did have enough to draw on when uh, the when I actually started putting stuff together. Um, and uh, as you can see, I've got some barbed wire, some chain link fence, some uh, nuclear reactors in the background. Yet I also included um, some images that were of a much more friendly nature, as you can see here. Um, and it was actually this image here that um, when I found this, I thought, oh, there is something here definitely to start with. Uh, and so once I had uh, compiled a, a, a a number of images into a folder. Um, I went over to uh, Photoshop and I created a new f uh, file and it was, um, oh if I can recall now, I think it was, it wasn't that large. Um, I think it was uh, roughly um, uh, 20, oh no, it was uh, uh, 10 by 20 I believe. Let's just start with that. And uh, I'm going to keep this uh, high res keep it to 300 and we'll keep it everything else as the same RGB um, and there I go. Now from here um, I began w taking some of the images from elsewhere and uh, I think it was this one here that I started with. I'm going to uh, zoom in and I'm just going to quickly uh, talk about how I, I did my selection for uh, this image. Uh, let's just zoom in even further here. And uh, as you can see, this is a somewhat soft edge. It's a scan of a printed piece, which actually I liked. I liked the printed texture um, that uh, the the rosette pattern of the RC, uh, the CMYK uh, inks going down on a printed page. Um, but it's still a somewhat soft image. But that actually suited my purposes just fine. Um, and to select that, because it was a fairly soft image, I actually just chose the lasso tool, and I started. Um, drawing uh, and I'm using a Wacom tablet here so that uh, makes this sort of exercise a little bit easier um, but just to, to show you how I did this I, I started drawing and um, I wouldn't draw the whole thing at once I would draw it in sections because it's a little bit easier to to make um, chunks of selection rather than doing the whole thing at once the fingers were somewhat important in this idea as you'll see later so I wanted to make sure I got those all right. In fact, I, I didn't quite get that right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key and just add a little bit extra because I think I cut off that poor boy's finger. There we go. And again, holding down the shift key, I can add to my selection. And essentially, that is how I proceeded to get this selection. Like I say, the the I'm, I'm not being too particular here because the, the nature of the photo is not so... Um, sharp that I need to be ultra precise, but I was precise enough to make sure that I uh, got everything I needed. And like I say, I then uh, holding down the shift button continued on selecting all those elements. Now let's just jump over to the um, to the final image and sort of see where I went with that. I'm actually going to open up my layers panel over here, and I'm going to um, I'm going to turn off everything except for that image. I actually brought it right into the file. But I just want to show you that eventually I did select that boy like that. And um, 
I did a few things uh, to uh, to modify that image. I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit more. I'm just going to. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my F key, and that way I can get that into full view. And I'm just going to zoom in. Now, like you can see here, there's uh, some nice rosette patterns in the the printed material. Um, and that'll actually serve my purposes fine, but I don't. I didn't want to have this full color uh, image here. So, with that new selected layer um, selected, or that new cropped layer, or uh, uh, selected, and meaning that I've cut him out uh, that with that layer selected here, um, I'm going to do a couple of different things. I'm actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my adjustments layer, which is at the bottom of my layers panel here, and I can select there. And I'm going to, um, first thing I'm doing, I'm going to desaturate him. I think I'm going to uh, take out his color altogether. Um, so let's go to, um, well, it, no, actually, what I think I'm going to do, let's do the threshold first and see if that gives us the effect that we want. And uh, threshold is uh, a way of turning any grayscale image or color image into strictly black and white. And this slider here basically tells Photoshop at what point does a gray pixel or a mid-value pixel turn from either uh, black to white. And you can see here that uh, this is giving me a very interesting, distinct graphic look. In fact, I kind of like that. Um, it created sort of a, a haunted look in, in the boy's face there. Yeah, and, and then you can sort of pick up the printed material or the, the rosette patterns of the printed material here. Um, and that was, I think that was sort of the level at which I, maybe I made it a little bit darker, maybe it was like that. But anyway, um, once I had uh, done that, I can just, um, now remember, uh, adjustment layers uh, work um, uh, by uh, adjusting every layer that is beneath them, unless you tell the adjustment layer that you would only like it to adjust the layer right below it. And in fact, that's what I would like to do. So let's go back to that adjustment layer. In order to tell the adjustment layer to just um, adjust the layer right below it, you have to click this button right here. You, if I hover over it, you can see it says this, this adjustment affects all layers below. Click to clip just the layer. And that's what I did. Now you can see how that's changed in my uh, layers uh, stack here. It's actually just clipped that one layer, or it's just affecting that one layer. And um, if I go up to uh, the actual file here, I'm, I'm actually going, let's turn off this uh, layer for a second, because I just would like to show you how that boy started off. And again, this was where I started. And, um, and that's just that's just fine. In fact, a little bit darker than when I actually started here. I might have played with the levels a little bit too, um, but that was essentially how I um, started off with was with this boy. And now um, let's go back to this original image. I also selected the um, the balloon that he's uh, reaching for here, um, and I, I turned that into another layer as well. Uh, but let's proceed on. Let's just actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start by um, uh, choosing this, uh, what eventually started to be my bottom layer in this image. Um, what I did is I, I, I selected the entire image uh, by going Command A. I created a new layer, set Command A, and filled that all with this blue. Just going to zoom out just a little bit. So that that is the this my starting layer. Um, then I, um, like I said, I started uh, uh, putting some images in like this boy. Let's, let's have that boy in there. Um, and then I started filling in some areas behind him. Uh, there was a misty sort of background here. If I click on this layer, you can see that it's in fact just um, uh, an image of some trees. Um, but again, I'm going to use the adjustment layer and I'm going to select uh, just the threshold again. And uh, this time I'm just again, remember, click just the layer below it and I'm going to adjust that threshold slider just so that I, those trees start to come into um, form and yeah, roughly about there I think would be fine again it's merely for the the effect that there is a landscape behind him all right um, and as a matter of fact I think I did this on the wrong layer. This next layer here is called a clouds layer. Well, I've called it the clouds layer, and it is in fact just an effect. Um, and the the way you do this is I'm going to turn that off, and I, let's start fresh. I'm going to create a new layer, 
and I'm going to go up to my filters uh, drop down and I'm going to select render clouds. Now you can see that clouds is just a matter of giving me a, a it's, it's just a, a fractal pattern that uh, uh, Photoshop generates and if you don't particularly like the effect that you've been given if you'd like to try a different set of clouds well you can in fact go back to the uh, filter drop down menu and select clouds again and it'll generate another fractal pattern um, and you can cycle through these um, quite easily if you just hold the command F button down uh, F for filter command filter and we can test out a whole different type of clouds and some of them will be a little bit different from others but generally what you get is a um, uh, half white half uh, black uh, image um, and that's just what I was looking for um, we'll say something like that but of course it's choosing black and white. Now why black and white? Well black and white happens to be my foreground and background colors. You can see that over here. And it, it'll use your foreground and background colors to generate this cloud. If I had chosen a different color, for example, if I'd chosen um, something uh, blue and maybe something uh, light blue and then generated the cloud, you can see that it'll choose those background and foreground colors. And that's fine. Um, but I also did something to that. I took that layer and turned it into a or changed its uh, color mode from color uh, from normal to color burn and then reduced down its opacity quite a bit and well, that's not quite the look that I ended up with here let's turn that back on again um, maybe I just you can tell that I actually have got too dark of a color set here uh, so perhaps let's try this again I'm going to choose this layer again and I'm going to choose a different color slightly lighter blue for my foreground color and we'll see if that gives me the, the look that I'm looking for eh, not quite Maybe I'll reduce the opacity yet again well that's that's getting closer to what I now I can sort of see the the cloud texture with that blue background as well yeah that's that's sort of what I was looking for all right uh, let's proceed on. I will just actually work up my layer stack and we'll talk about each of these individual layers and how they were created uh, in sequence here. Uh, this next uh, layer is called, I've called it white fence and there's also a, another layer on top of that called blue fence. Um, and uh, I like the, the texture and the pattern that was created by overlaying these two textures together. Let's talk quickly about how that was generated. Uh, I have to find uh, the that graphic unfortunately. Uh, there it is. And um, let's talk about how this was changed from this uh, photo into a, a black and white graphic that I was able to import. Well, um, I think we saw this earlier when we used the threshold pattern. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to my image drop down menu and I'm going to select adjustments. Um, I could do this right in that file as well, but I'm going to do it here just to make it a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to select threshold. And again, I'm just going to play with my slider until I have a black and white image of that text. Now if I go all the way to the to the far left here I could actually almost get that completely disappeared um, to, dis to disappear. Now I don't want that. I want something that's a little bit heavier but I don't want that black to be coming into it either. I'd like it right about there I'd say. Okay. I can then select the entire thing um, I'm going to select uh, Command A or uh, yeah, Command A on my keyboard. You can see that selected the entire thing. Copy. Let's go back to our poster and just paste that into place. Now it's pasted it in as a black and white graphic, but in this case, what I would like to do is I would like to um, change that to multiply, and multiply will allow me to see right through that that image. But, um, as you can tell, that I do have a white sample uh, of that fence as well. Uh, let me just... So in order to, do, to, to um, put a white um, object in there, let's go back to... Um, no, that's not it. There we go. Um, in order to get a black and white version of this, um, what I need to do is I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to go to uh, Image, Adjustments, 
invert. There we go. There's one other thing I, I would like to do. I'm going to go to my um, magic wand tool and I'm going to make sure that uh, contiguous is clicked off and I'm going to select uh, two for my tolerance and I'm going to just select one of the black areas there. What that's done, it's selected all the black uh, uh, inside parts of that fence and of course I don't want that. I would like the white part of that fence so I'm going to select um, the select drop down menu and I'm going to invert my selection. Now I can copy that and paste it into my poster sample just like I did with the black one. So that is how I managed to get this black and white fencing in here. Um, in the next video we're going to continue on and we're going to talk about uh, um, some other elements such as uh, getting this uh, sign in and, and some uh, barbed wire as well.